When could live concerts be making a comeback? Ticketmaster says it's working on pandemic safety plans. And the man behind the name. We share the legacy of Yokio Okutsu, whose name has recently been tied to tragedy, but he will forever be a war hero. We're working for Hawaii. This is the KHON2 News at 9 with Howard Dashevsky and Bridget Namata. And good evening, everybody, and thank you for joining us tonight. And we begin with yet another sharp spike in COVID-19 cases. A more than 50% increase from yesterday's numbers. The statewide total yesterday was at 78. Today, there were 118 new infections. 85 on Oahu, 23 on the Big Island, 6 on Maui, 3 on Kauai, and one resident diagnosed out of state. Tomorrow, the lockdown on Lanai will end after officials were able to contain the outbreak there. And it'll likely be months before a big concert will return to Hawaii. But how can we be safe in a crowd? Tonight, Ticketmaster is weighing in. Here's Kimberly Speakman with a story that's new at 9. Ticketmaster is coming up with guidelines to help event organizers figure out how to bring back audiences into these live events safely, something that local promoters tell me is needed. From how many people should be seated for social distancing to how to work a contactless box office, there's a bunch of ideas for venues and event organizers. Ticketmaster says they're also exploring the potential of working with healthcare providers to link test results right to your ticket. And it would be an option for event organizers if they want to require people to get tested before future events or verify if they've received a COVID vaccine once one is approved. I think it's something that's going to have to happen if people want to get back to live entertainment. We're old, or we can put a your phone. Bill Mayer, Mariah Carey, Diana Ross. These are just some of the acts that were supposed to take place this year, but were canceled. It's, it's been tough for everybody because when you look at uh, not only for my business and what we had invested in shows, uh, all that money's gone. So the money we spent for advertising and any advance expenses is non-recoupable. Bartolini says he's not sure when the industry could return. His first event is tentatively scheduled for September of next year. But Ticketmaster's guidelines could help. And I definitely think um, people will feel safe knowing that there are certain protocols. And um, that way they don't really have to worry. There's still questions on how organizers would work with healthcare providers while making sure private information is protected. But Bartolini is hopeful this will get the industry back on its feet. I really look forward to uh, welcoming people back to shows and having that energy. And Kimberly Speakman, KHON2 News, working for Hawaii. Also tonight, no word yet on what caused yesterday's high-rise condo fire in Hawaii Kai. Fire officials say the blaze was contained to a single unit on floor number six. The resident was not home at the time. Sadly, two dogs perished in the fire. Nobody else was injured. On this Veterans Day, there were ceremonies across the state, though this year there were no crowds because of the pandemic. But the respect for our servicemen and women continue to run deep. At sunrise, a virtual ceremony was held on board the battleship Missouri Memorial at Pearl Harbor. This year's ceremony not only paid tribute to all veterans, past and present, it also paid special tribute to our World War II veterans in honor of the 75th year since the end of the greatest world war. In the wake of a pandemic sweeping over our country through deeply divided politics, now more than ever, we need to remember the values those service members in World War II held. While portions of Pearl Harbor are open, the battleship Missouri Memorial remains closed until further notice. Well, we are still some two weeks away, two weeks from tomorrow, of course, is Thanksgiving, but a lot of folks are looking ahead to Christmas and wondering, will the city be celebrating like they normally do at Kapolei Hale and Honolulu Hale? 
Well, I got a lot of the answers yesterday when I had an opportunity to speak one-on-one -on -one with Mayor Kurt Caldwell. And here's the answers tonight in a story you'll see only on KHON2. Take a look at the grounds in front of Honolulu Hale, and it's quite apparent it is clearly not beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Normally, by this time, the city's tree would have been selected, cut down, delivered, and ready to go on the front lawn. We would have started putting up decorations last week for, for the Christmas holidays, and we're going to take a more cautious approach this year to the celebration of Christmas on Oahu. Mm -hmm. So our decorations won't go up until after the Thanksgiving uh, celebration. Honolulu Mayor Kurt Caldwell is quick to say Christmas is not being canceled, but he does say it'll certainly be looking a whole lot different this year. It's not 2019, it's 2020, and we have COVID-19 with us. But it's a reminder to everyone that this Christmas is not like others, but it doesn't mean we give up. This celebration is going to be about hope. Our tree will be a display of hope. The mayor says the large tree has been selected and should be cut down soon. And once up and decorated, he'll encourage families to enjoy it from afar, from their cars in drive-by fashion. But he also says he understands family traditions. And if you still want to take a family photo in front of the tree... We will put circles around the tree with a six-foot radius so you can be inside your family bubble mm -hmm. or your living unit bubble, take your picture, be safe and then be on your way. The mayor also says all those beautiful trees that normally adorn the courtyard at Honolulu Hale will still be put together by the various city departments. Only this year, they'll wind up someplace else. 18 departments in the city have agreed to still do trees. They'll either put them in the lobbies of their, their um, entrances to their offices, or they're gonna take them to not-for-profits or hospitals and, and put a display up in the lobbies of those places. And if you're wondering about Santa and Tutu Mele, not to worry. They'll be there perched in their familiar spot atop the fountain. Only this year, look for them to be wearing masks. I'm going to make that recommendation, Dash. So look for a quicker buildup and a smaller display than in years past. Also, no light parade. But rest assured, Christmas will happen at both Honolulu and Kapolei Hale. When you think about the theme of Christmas, it really is about hope rebirth, renewal. A lot of families happy to hear that. Stick around, everybody. Coming up next, the man behind the name. Tonight, we share the legacy of Yukio Okutsu, whose name has recently been tied to tragedy, but he will forever be a war hero.
by Zephyr Insurance Company. Well, the name Yukio Okutsu has been in the news a lot this year, sadly, in connection with the deaths of 27 people at the Veterans Care Home at Hilo that bears his name. On this Veterans Day, we remember Yukio Okutsu for the heroism and patriotism he embodied on the battlefield and for decades after World War II. Here's Gina Mangieri. April 7th, 1945 was just another tough day for the Japanese-American 442nd Regimental Combat Team. Yukio Okutsu was among those staked out in an uphill battle on Mount Belvedere along Italy's coast. The Germans held the high ground, firing down from fortified nests. We got stuck there, and so, I, you know, the machine gun was firing on us. Uh. The young platoon sergeant from Koloa, Kauai, knew what he didn't want to do. You don't expect your, your men to charge one machine gun like that. So he made a move, unbeknownst to the Germans, and even to his own brothers in arms. So I was in position, I can crawl, and then, you know, I got in position where I can throw grenades. And throw he does. One, two, down goes the first nest. Close call for Okutsu himself. And the first one, yeah, I took some fire, and one hit me on my helmet. But under cover of brush, he zigzags on. I hit the machine gun nest, so then I moved from there, and, and I, I outflanked the next machine gun nest, and they gave up. That's a modest way of saying he captured two Germans there and four more at a third nest. He was going for broke. That's that's so true. It's a term that the guys would use on their gambling, you know, playing dice. Um, playing cards, and what it really means is we're going to go all in. We're going to shoot the works. We're going to give it our all. By dark, the 442nd held all the cards, the last of the ridges. I was just lucky, I guess. Yeah, somebody up there take care of me. <laughs> Maybe it was God. Maybe it was Sadao Munamori, who'd given his life days before, running a similar gauntlet close by on the Gothic line. He charged the Nazi machine gun nest. He took out a couple of the nests. And as he was returning to his crater, a grenade hit him on the helmet and it bounced in front of two of his fellow soldiers. And he instinctively and immediately threw himself on the grenade and took the blow. And he saved the lives of his two fellow soldiers, but in the process lost his own. In the year 2000, President Bill Clinton awarded Okutsu and 19 others from the 442nd the Medal of Honor. I'm glad that at least they recognize uh, the Japanese soldiers, even if it's 50 years after. I'm Thank thankful that we got something. Not for only me, but you know, for the whole Japanese community. Okutsu died in 2003 at the age of 81. In 2008, the state's only veterans home opened on the Big Island, bearing the name of the hero from Hilo, even if he had to go from Kauai to Italy to get there. It's a home where nearly 100 veterans at a time can find care and respite in their golden years. Tragedy struck this year in a deadly COVID outbreak that took 27 lives, never to be forgotten. But always remember what the name Yukio Okutsu stood for before 2020. It's a shame that his name is now going to be associated with the COVID pandemic because of the tragedy that's happening at the home. But the truth is, he was a great American hero. They fought for our nation. They fought for liberty and justice and for America's promise. Gina Mangieri, KHON2 News, working for Hawaii. Wow. I will always think of his name differently now. I hope we all do. Pretty incredible story. All right, coming up next here on the News at 9, need a little early fix of Christmas. For Christmas, the Tajiri family getting ready to ship its trees. Pretty exciting. We'll have details next.
Sleep bed smart. Shop Bedmart. Another sign tonight that the holidays are fast approaching. A team from Christmas Hawaii was in Oregon yesterday prepping to load up a large batch of Nordman furs destined for Hawaii. The Tajiri family will be arriving here on Oahu soon, but sadly without Mr. Christmas himself, Richard Tajiri, who died earlier this year. They'll be setting up shop for the 44th year in a row here on Oahu, and just like everything else, this year's tree sale will be adjusted to include contactless curbside pickup. More details will be released in the weeks to come. While the pandemic won't keep Santa from appearing at the mall, don't think visiting him will be the same as years before. Bass Pro Shops in Las Vegas put Santa behind a plexiglass wall so kids can still take a picture with him and they can tell Santa what's on their wish list by using walkie-talkies. Here at home, Santa at Alamoana Center will be behind a giant picture frame for social distancing. You will need to reserve your spot before heading down there. All right, taking a live look outside through our sky cam, a breezy night for Veterans Day night, and it's just for parts of the state. Justin Cruz will be back with your full forecast. at rotary.org slash action. With KHO and 2 weather, Justin Cruz. Strong winds triggering a wind advisory for portions of the state, including the Kohala area of the Big Island, Central Maui Valley, and West Maui, as well as the island of Lanai. It's also triggered a high surf advisory for the east shores. So we're storm-free right now. The only sources of any kind of rain or moisture will be what's being pushed through with the trade winds. And those trade winds are strong. We'll see 20 to 30 mile per hour winds with gusts that are exceeding that. But in terms of our showers, it's all about the windward showers from here on out through the upcoming weekend. And because the winds are a little bit stronger right now, that gives a good opportunity for the islands to extract a lot of that moisture from the clouds using the mountains. And that's what we're seeing tonight. Check out all these windward showers move through. Quite numerous, uh, and they're quick passing too. So if there is any kind of rain that's in your area, give it a few minutes, it might pass. But at the same time, another shower may replace it. You can see this along the Ko'olau's. Occasionally those showers moving into central Oahu, even west Oahu at times, east Maui. West Maui Mountains, Molokai windward sides, and of course the windward sides of the Big Island seeing numerous showers as 
much of the windward areas have seen pretty much all day long. Much drier for those leeward spots. Mention those winds and how it's kicking up the east shores at 7 to 10, high surf advisory. There's also a statewide small craft advisory. So boaters and fishermen, it's quite choppy outside. One south shores at 1 to 3, 2 to 4 for the north and West Shores check in at flat to two. Another day of windy weather then starting on Friday, the winds start to taper off. It's down to breezy levels at 25 miles per hour on Friday, and then down to 20 and 15 this weekend. Weekend's looking very nice, by the way. It's probably not gonna be as wet. We'll get our sunshine and lighter trade winds will return to the islands. Trade's not going anywhere, but they'll be much lighter this weekend.